When working with MicroStation dialogs, you've got a few ways to work with them. Uh, MicroStation dialog would be like the uh, level display, level manager, reference dialog box, element information. You can dock a number of these dialog boxes and a number of areas within the interface. And you use what are called docking indicators or docking regions to help you um, highlight or show you where you can actually dock as you drag the dialog around in the in the interface of MicroStation. There's also the ability to auto hide your dialogs so that trying to give you more real estate you can have the dialog be sitting there and then go off the screen and then come back whenever you need it. And also another thing you can do with dialogs is use transparency. So I can apply a transparency to one dialog at a time or I can say throughout with a user preference have your dialogs all be transparent and we'll show you how to accomplish that as well. So now we're going to take a look at working with dialogs in the MicroStation interface. So let's launch MicroStation again and take a look at it. Docking MicroStation dialogs are a little bit different now. Undocking them is still the same. Do a left click hold and drag and you can rip the dialog off the interface. But if I do a left click, drag and hold, you'll see these docking regions. Right now I just hovered my cursor over the right docking region. And then I can do a left click, hold and move my cursor to the left docking region. And that'll actually dock it along the uh, interface of MicroStation. I can take the element selection tool and move it to a left docking region. And you can see it's being side by side with the task dialog box. I can stretch it and then undock it if I want to. I can also set it to the left side if I wanted to, or above it. Setting it above it, then I've got the task below and the element selection above. One other option I can do is create what's called a tabbed browser. So on the left hand side, I've got both my tasks there. I can add additional dialogs to the left hand side there as tabbed dialogs. So there I just added a level display. I can open up element information and bring that one over as a tab display. And the other one I'm going to open up is Project Explorer. That too can also be docked as a tab display. So I've got a number of them across the bottom there. I've got my tasks, element selection, level display, element information, and Project Explorer. So real quick access for all of those. Now up at the top there's a little push pin for auto hide. And when I auto hide it, all those dialogs actually get pushed over to the left. Now all I have to do is take my cursor and hover, and then that will fly out and I can get the uh, dialog that's over on the left hand side. Then the positional keyboard mapping still works. So even though the tasks are hidden, you can still use your Q1, W1 uh, positional keyboard mapping to make that thing work. I'll pin that back down. There we go. That's the way I usually work. Next we're going to think we're going to show you some of the dialogues can actually be docked top and bottom. If I dock it in the lower region, it'll actually dock as such and I can resize it and it'll work with the view. Otherwise, I can bring it all the way to the bottom, which will expand all the way across the entire microstation interface instead of just the view area. And then I can also again bring it back into the view and then auto hide it. So then it becomes a tab at the bottom that I can quickly fly out by hovering my cursor over that position. Level our raster manager, same way. Dock it down there, hide it. And level manager as well. I can take that one, dock it below and then hide it. So now I've got those dialogs at the bottom. All I have to do is move my cursor. The dialog quick pops up. I can do my work and then get, move my cursor out of that area and it'll auto hide for me. So by default, this is where we're usually going to start. Next thing I want to talk about is the transparency of these dialog boxes. So for example, say I've got a dialog box open, the reference dialog box here. And what I can do is set the transparency of this dialog box so I can actually see through it. In the upper left hand corner, I'm doing a left click and I can actually change the transparency here. Say I want to set it to about 75%. So you can actually see here how I can see through the dialog boxes and see the elements behind it. I can't reach through and actually grab those elements, but I can pick from the uh, reference dialog box there and use the buttons and uh, selections there. Same thing with level display. 
I can uh, go to the upper left hand icon and change the transparency to 75, hit OK. And again, the dialog box works just like it would, and, but I can't reach through and grab the graphics from behind. So it's just see-through at this point. There I'm turning the levels on and off, and you can see the levels turn on and off as you go. We'll set those back to being a uh, full opaque or zero. And there's a workspace preference setting that you can use here too to make sure that all the dialog box, if you wanted to, are transparent. And there's a checkbox there. Transparent dialogs become opaque when receiving focus. And then all dialogs use the same transparency. So I can say use all dialogs have transparency. So even element selection there and the reference dialog box and level display dialog box. But as soon as I give that level display dialog box focus, you'll notice how it became opaque. Now I'm touching the element selection tool, and that one has focus, so that one's become opaque. The other ones are now um, transparent. So the dialog receiving focus becomes opaque. That was the checkbox that we used there. So just to turn that off, I'd go back to workspace preferences and toggle those things back off and set it back to zero, and then I'd be back to where I was by default.